Dom you. Dom you. Dom. Dom you. Domination University. Welcome to Domination University. This is Francesca J here with a very special guest, Adelaide Marcus. Hello, I'm happy to be here. We're happy to have you. I'm so excited. I've known you for a while. I've been uh, a patron to some of the many arts that you do as a uh, very conscious creator. Uh, we could do an entire art history course dedicated to your young life. So would you tell us some of the things that you do? I'm sure you can't fit all of them <laughs> into like a brief moment, but just give us some highlights of your just your favorite um, artistic extensions. Well, I've been called a Renaissance woman many times. And as far as what I produce artistically, I do visual art, paintings. I also love creating an atmosphere and decorating, you know, my home into a creation station, which I've taught out of for the last 10 years, belly dancing. And I'm also a performing artist. And there's a rabbit hole of entertainment arts that I do, including mermaiding, stilt walking. I've even gone through aliases and rapped and... Um, but most of all, I've been belly dancing as my foundation and my root and kind of my gateway into the large spectrum of the arts that I now ensue. Yeah, awesome. I've seen a number of those and I love it. You got to find uh, Adelaide. Was it Art by Adelaide? Yes, com? that's that Art by Adelaide is my visual arts website and I just created the new website, Art of You Belly Dance, which highlights my belly dancing and my teaching. Awesome, yeah. And you can find a lot of her art if you want to follow her on Instagram, or I don't know if you can handle any more Facebook followers if you're, like, cut off at this point. I can't have friends, but I can have <laughs> followers. Um, although, if you follow me, you can still be my friend. We just won't tell Facebook. <laughs> oh, gosh. Yeah, oh, my gosh. So your art has is just fantastic, and I'm here at your house, which is – Oh, man, I could feel the energy just kind of starting to kind of lift up because you're about to be moving, which mm -hmm. is kind of sad. You're leaving Ocean Beach and it, on to the next, you know, chapter, and I'm excited for you. Thanks. Me too. But the paintings on the wall, I mean, it's, you know, I don't know if there's been particular um, comparisons, kind of Picasso meets Alex Gray even, but yet, you know, from the – you know, prism of the mind of Adelaide, you know, a more feminine mm -hmm. approach, very spiritual, uh, very much, uh, I mean, it's just, my gosh, it's like a, just a journey. I don't know <laughs> where your imagination comes from in the universe, but uh, yeah, it's definitely um, inspiring to say the least. Thank you. Yeah, I, um, it is a journey, you know, and it's, it's, there's so, you know, journeys, that I've taken have inspired me to do paintings and then while creating it's a journey in itself and then while people are watching them or you know looking at them they can you know use that as like a window in almost like you have windows in your house to see the environment around you I think of paintings as like a window and it's like what type of scene or vision do you want to have looking at you in your home um, some people create vision boards and I see all of my paintings including the ones that are around us right now as a vision board of sorts because as the art shifts so does my energy so I love you know being able to create paintings and then sell them because I I of anybody can have that scientific approach of like realizing like whoa the living room feels totally different because I just got a new painting in or I shifted them and it's really obvious to me how potent art and what we look at and the stimulus we get in through our eyes and the colors and how that affects our entire like system and how we actually are feeling in that moment. Oh, for sure. I mean, there's definitely, a, you know, a decent amount of documentation, but from a more abstract, you know, perspective, it really feels like a vortex, you know, and, and I do different stuff like that, mostly at this point in my life with writing. And I feel like with my writings or different notes, different journal entries and stuff that I do, it's almost like, um, like a, um, like a, a secret doorway, like a pathway. So if I'm in a completely different part of my life, you know, I, I look at this uh, imagery and, you know, I still sketch a little bit. I used to paint or I read a passage, you know, and it's like you're back in time in a completely d different world. Mm -hmm. so I can, can definitely yeah. relate, especially right now, because um, as as you said, I'm moving and I was going through a lot of my art supplies yesterday and I found these little scribbled notebook sheets of like these 
just literally scribbled down like not even nice art sketches and it was like oh my god ah I remember all these paintings <laughs> I wanted to create and since I haven't been painting recently it was really like it's nice to realize that like it's just like a switch you know you can see a, a symbol and it can remind me of the entire concept that inspired me to jot down that symbol yeah. and since I'm so so much of my art is concept based anyways all I need is the right kind of symbol to re-trigger th what I'm actually trying to convey I don't know how it's going to come out. I don't have, you know, that specific like, and I'm going to use the blah, blah, blah technique with this brush. It's more <laughs> of the concept that's guiding. And That's awesome. Yeah, it's kind of like a magic carpet ride into <laughs> like another like world, especially in your case. I wanted to, you know, get some of your thoughts. You know, a, a big part of Domination University has been a focus on bringing art back into people's lives in different ways, whether it's crafting, hobbies, you know, dance, uh, poetry, you know, whatever works, you know, for a particular person and their skill set. Not everyone can paint like you. But, you know, what are your thoughts, especially since you've, you know, been teaching for so long and you've been very active? I know you've d done uh, art modeling. And I mean, just a number of different things, you know, tell us what you feel about art for the average person who perhaps doesn't quite trust their ability to sketch. Well, there's many ways to create art. Um, and that's why, you know, when you asked me how would I describe, you know, my different arts in the first question, it's it's not really so much what I do. It's the lifestyle that I'm living and it's coming from the desire to express something so if someone doesn't have the technical skills and is allowing that to prevent them from creating something they they aren't really giving themselves that permission to simply express the f the feeling and if someone wants to do art they have the desire to want to express and there's so many ways to do that some people are more physical some people need to meditate and may might you know want to even enjoy like a coloring book which I did create a coloring book called Chakra mm -hmm. Mandalas and that's more use using art as a form of meditation so so you know it really just depends on like well what is it that you're wanting to receive do you want to express something in that case you really can't go wrong if your goal is to express then it doesn't really matter how it looks or you know, either visually or how it even feels. Um, if you're expressing, you're expressing. And if you just want to, s you know, de-stress or meditate, then you can do things like coloring books or just even focus on specific colors and how they make you feel or how they might relate to the chakras, which is what motivated my chakra mandala coloring book. Um, and if you do see my art and if any of you listeners um, have a link to my art, you can see how much I, I use color. Um, so my my suggestion would would be to really first of all feel the desire and where that's coming from and also look into what's preventing you from doing that because there's probably some belief that's not very empowering that just breaking through that disbelief is almost more powerful than doing whatever artistic endeavor you wanted to do just moving into it is so important or else that little no naysayer voice just kind of gets more powerful <laughs> right right exactly I was just from remembering how um how you have your bachelor degree <laughs> in psychology yeah <laughs> <laughs> but you grew up in a family of artists you want to tell us a little bit of that because I mean that had to be you know I mean obviously you know otherworldly you know is kind of like the level that you guys are on you've been flown across the world to <laughs> perform you've been on a number of different platforms to mm -hmm. highlight yourself as yeah. you know as an artist dancer model even um do you want to tell us a little bit about the background and some of the, like the the biggest things that have really nourished you as a person coming from a family so dedicated to the arts yeah well I'll tell you that I learned to spell my name on the walls of my house <laughs> and my parents weren't like oh my god don't write on the walls and the it was like uh yeah we'll just take a roller and roll right over it and then you really th like just that alone like the thing that that some I think parents really worry about is is very small compared to what the child can be gaining and I think my parents just naturally had 
an out of the box perspective to the point where I was allowed. I mean, I wasn't really allowed to be some crazy brat and, and but like things like drawing on the walls. I loved it and it encouraged me. And I remember one of my first series that I really spent a lot of time on uh, a long time ago. I called it the slumber party. Um, my dad came home and I had like a dozen of these different characters and I was like, this is Melissa and she likes this and did, and he really saw that I really went somewhere and he ended up uh, framing each one of them and lining the upper walls with them. So seeing my, my art worthy of being even framed, you know, was a huge encouraging moment that I still to this day can remember. So, um, and so there's that and, and also my family has just kind of chosen to, um, want to be in each other's lives and as we all know with family that's not always easy and because they pull your trigger points and <laughs> drive you crazy um, but we've always made an effort to move through that and to this day my my parents are both remarried and we all spend the holidays together which is also a not so typical family thing to do but we've really let the love and support um, guide us and of course we all stress about finances and being a self-employed artist of all types of entrepreneurial endeavors can be really scary for a lot of parents to believe in their children based on their own fears and um, so luckily my dad being an artist and black sheep of his family himself um, really encouraged us all and my brother's a music producer and my sister's an entertainment um, booking agent and we're all we're all in it <laughs> that's awesome yeah I met you Gosh, what was it? Probably over 10 years ago. And I met you as um, a student of uh, your belly dance classes. And a little bit kind of about my background, because I feel like it, it will describe just how much I respect you as a belly dance teacher and beyond. Uh, so I got into uh, belly dance when I was more so getting into energy. I was getting into yoga and Pilates at, at the same time, learning about the chakras and stuff like that. And so for me, it was very much um, it, just a, an inner exploration. And I just fell in love with your teaching style because it you have so much body intelligence, but you also have you know the patience of a good teacher and you also – you, you have the energy wisdom, which is just the most rare thing. I mean, I've taken a number of different belly dance classes in multiple states. I mean, I started doing belly dance, you know, probably um, 2002-ish, so much, much longer. And I feel like, you know, when when I met you, I'm like, oh, my gosh, she's doing, like, Qigong. <laughs> she's doing, like, Tai Chi. She's, like, uh, you know, yoga instructor. But yet you've been belly dancing your whole life, too. Do you want to tell us something about like the value, especially if it's someone who's maybe never really had an interest in belly dance, you know, uh, female or not, but can you give us some of the history since it's, you were basically, you know, you were belly dancing in the womb. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I was like, well, w I, good to revert back to your last question about my family. <laughs> the, my dad's a painter and my mother is the belly dancer. So kind of, you know, there's the, if you had to cut up things into a half, you know, that would be a clear, <laughs> clear half, the art, the visual art and the belly dancing of all the entertainments. Um, so what was the specific question? The uh, Well, I'm just want to get like a general, like if you're going to try to give some tidbits of background on the history of belly dance, why it's important, mm. if, especially if you're a female out there, you've never had a desire to belly dance and you're like belly dance. That yes, sounds okay. exciting, but what, you know, where did belly dance come from and how can you bring it into someone's life from, you know, what are some of the benefits? Yeah. So this is definitely um, a loaded question. So I might <laughs> answer it on multiple historic levels, starting with a post that I saw today on Instagram of a male friend of mine who went to the chiropractor to adjust his spine and, and he was saying how his chiropractor was um, referencing some, like, I think old Eastern wisdom of like if something's going wrong in the body in the digestion and anywhere the first thing to check is the spine and usually if you get your spine aligned aligned that you'll um all of the other health issues will kind of dissipate and I even said on one of my um courses I just released a healthy spine is a healthy mind mm -hmm. and then take that to 
to the actual movement that's happening in belly dancing and how you are literally undulating through each vertebrae. And in Eastern philosophy, they think of the area in between the vertebrae as like little gates. And you, we have our like our lower part where the sacrum is, our middle section and the upper. And those are correlated to the dantians or spiritual points in the body. So if you're opening those gates and closing them, the way that I see it is you're allowing in energy and movement and air and prana and life into the body and you're you're keeping that body flexible and able to continue to um, allow that energy to move like a river. And so that is the benefits that that have on the body are so immense because like I said, a healthy spine, a healthy mind. And the spine literally leads up into the mind and the brain and how you're able to, you know, kind of hold your head up and, and think. And, um, and you know, people talk about having pains in their neck and um, all these all these metaphors. And, and so there's numerous benefits to just getting your, uh, your spine aligned. And as far as where belly dancing kind of stemmed from, it was a... a dance that um, women did or a young girls when they got their first period they were taught this dance from their mothers or sisters because it prepared your body to um, to give birth and to ease menstrual cramps and to um, allow you know those cramps and that stuck energy to flow so as you started to get your period you'd keep your body healthier via the belly dance and the hip undulations and figure eight type movements and it also would help you drop your hips and widen them so that when you were to give birth that you would have your body more prepared on the external internally it expands and contracts the body so that when you are going through labor you can like a snake shedding its skin it kind of expands to loosen the skin and then contract so that the skin can then kind of shed off um, and so there's so much symbolism between snakes expansion and contraction the kundalini energy that also relates to the spine and then just the beautiful like history of the dance and how it really did bring women together and was never actually a performing arts in tradition um, in its traditional form um, and women actually did the belly rolls while their other friend was in labor like a woman would come to the labor and they would do belly rolls to help um, hypnotize the mind and relax the woman into having birth oh so wow. it really brought women together as young girls as um, you know women getting married to having you know children to also keeping your body healthy through old age um, and it was also a dance just to celebrate and have fun and feel feminine and have an excuse to you know be around other ladies it actually was never shown to the men until the gypsies took the dance and started performing with it out in the streets for money and that's how the coin belts started that you see today uh -huh. so like I said loaded <laughs> question <laughs> the benefits <laughs> I can just talk about the benefits forever but there's also that strong <laughs> history and then considering my mother taught me and my sister I really do quite literally feel like this is my birthright <laughs> oh for sure and I mean I, I would like to encourage all women to at least try it because I feel like it's been so rewarding for me um, you know, I've done so much different energy work. I played sports too. And you probably remember my body. Like I'm naturally super stiff <laughs> <laughs> and I naturally don't dance well, I'm more of a left brain person. Um, but it's just done so much. I feel like, you know, you get so many benefits, like if you're getting massage and you're opening up the meridians mm -hmm. or if, um, you have acupuncture opens up the meridians. If you're doing yoga and you're moving chi and there's only so many ways you can move chi from like the inside, especially from the abdomen, you know, the parts of our body, like our, you know, our glutes, our ass, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like even like our, you know, our reproductive organs, they don't typically get as much attention as they should from an energetic position, unless you're having sex, of course. 
Uh, but just in terms of like moving chi, you can't neglect that stuff. There's so much powerful energy there. There can be a lot of like um, stagnant energy in regards to lower chakras, root chakra, survival. We hold a lot of stress there from our everyday lives. And this, uh, this would be TMI if it wasn't Domination University. <laughs> so it's not TMI. But just getting back into belly dance after taking a couple of years of a break, just life kind of taking, you know, a couple crazy turns. Oh, my God. Sex is so much <laughs> better when you belly dance. So much. I uh, I cannot say enough. I, I probably can. But, you know, being a female and, you know, being on more of the receptive end of penetration, obviously, <laughs> I feel like you can be in complete control. Like if you're belly dancing and your Kegel muscles are like, you know, warrior woman, <laughs> like level, like you're in control and sex doesn't hurt when you're in control. You can completely decide. And I, I've even had a conversation with my boyfriend. I'm like, oh my God, this is so much better now that I can control exactly where you're going, no matter if I'm on like my back or my knees, I'm still in control and not to be control freak about it. We're just talking about, <laughs> you know, enjoyment, feeling like your body is able to fully like benefit from a, a sexual exchange because you're, you know, continually like moving chi and cleansing out the body from a physical and energetic standpoint. Yeah. And that again is an expansion and contraction type of you know, motion. And it's like, if you only did Kegels, like even that exercise, when you're peeing, you like hold, release, hold, release. And then there's also exercises where you release and then even further release. And that's even like with your muscles, if you, if you see like people who go to the gym and they can't relax their muscles, those muscles aren't actually as like useful. Like you should be able to soften the muscle enough that you can literally jiggle your legs while you're shimming, which my students usually are like, wait, really? I'm like, yeah, let it all <laughs> jiggle. Let the fat, let the muscle and even the muscle jiggle, you know, and then firm it up, tighten it up. And that's called a tension shimmy where it vibrates a little faster. But that like ex ability, like you said, that control of like, I'm going to relax and release and allow in, in your case, uh, or like contract and, and, you know, communicate and dance with your partner in a way where, you know, their penis will know, you know, and, and if you guys are in tune, then, you, you know, obviously always even better. Um, but yeah, thank you for sharing. That. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Never too so TMI lately. for me. And I guess not, <laughs> not our listeners either. <laughs> oh, my God. I totally recommend it. Do it for the bedroom. Do it for the bedroom. I, so been, how come I haven't been saying that? Thanks, Francesca. This oh is my like, God. you want better sex? <laughs> Belly dance. I'm like, why haven't I said that already? <laughs> I'm, I'm a salesperson. Yeah, no I'm wonder. Like outside sales. <laughs> and um, I actually did your course. I want to talk about that in, mm -hmm. um, shortly. But so I drove down to San Diego from L.A. yesterday. I'm in the car all the time. Um, yeah, I'm walking around a briefcase. I'm, you know, I'm hustling. I, I you know, I'm not trying to complain about my job, but it can kind of beat up my body. And so I started doing your course and my God, I didn't even realize like some of these, you know, the muscles were so tight. My back was hurting because I slept on kind of a shitty bed last mm -hmm. night, <laughs> old bed, parents house. Uh, but it had just did so much um, before we get into that, because I really want to break down, you know, just how impressed I am with your online course. Mm, thank um, you. Can you tell us about sisterhood? That's a big focus here at Domination University. And you've been teaching for over 10 years. Yeah. Right. For a long yeah. time. Tell us about that, like just the te the be being able to bond with other women, especially, you know, you've probably seen your students kind of evolve just in the course of, you know, mm -hmm. learning that body wisdom. Yeah. Um, sisterhood has become such an integral part of my life now um i i remember f for a while i always made male friends a lot easier and um really longed for that sisterhood and i just realized i needed to stop walking on eggshells around women i was so you know enamored by my own sex just like <laughs> oh and, and I wasn't being as sarcastic and as flirt like flirty as I would be with all the guys and and I was like I'm just gonna be sarcastic and flirty and flirt with girls and you know just be myself and like honestly that authenticity really I just started gaining really close connections with females and now I'm at a place where I'm getting weekly you know messages from women saying like you know 
I want you to know that your post sometimes got me, you know, the next breath I needed to believe in myself. And, and, um, I, I really do honestly want to see the women around me, like be, feel empowered and feel comfortable in their bodies and in who they are. And I think because I can say that with such like honest desire that the bonds that I've created with females are just so much stronger because I kind of got out of my way of like what I should say or how I should act and just really let what I, you know, what I just said about what I want for other women and for myself um, be the leader. After that, like sisterhood just, just became a lot easier. And then on top of me, being willing and as other people call it vulnerable enough to share you know kind of nude pictures you know or like uh kind of artistically you know artistically nude photos or along with poetry on social media and um then it becomes a little bit more obvious to kind of stare at like at like and see what i'm really about and instead of having what may have happened years ago where women become competitive or judgmental about it um I've had people respond with other posts and literally at the bottom say like inspired by you know something Adelaide Marcus shared a week ago and it's just so obvious to me how much we need to be like the role models that we need because we certainly aren't getting them from pop culture and people women older women elders crones are looking up to like these 21 year old women and wanting to be them forever and to me it's just absolute denial of like the natural cycles of uh, of life Mm -hmm. and the idea of wrinkles anti-aging creams and you know as a woman I think we can probably all agree that we've had thoughts around these subjects and um, my friend even posted today about how she apologized because her legs were hairy when she went to her acupuncturist and then was like, why the hell should I apologize? And, you know, I'm a professional entertainer. I always joke that I have to get paid to shave my legs because <laughs> I only do it before gigs. And <laughs> I mean, it's just me feeling comfortable with that, that allow my students to like come to class and they're like, wow, we went to these other like tribal belly dance classes and we felt like it was a fashion show or we you know people had to wear dark eyeliner to get in. And I'm like, mm-hmm. nah, like get over here. Like, let's do this. And, um, and so that to me, that sisterhood is just like, look, you don't need to look or act or be of any shape or size and just to kind of celebrate each other and like that's why I said yes to this podcast (laughs) like we're all about sisterhood (laughs) and and lifting each other up I was like yes (laughs) hell yeah yeah I love just the realness and the, the purity behind that it's it's so important. We all have something to share, whether you're young or you're old. And, mm-hmm. you know, we can, it, there should be that kind of that circle, you know, constantly kind of completing. You, you never know what um, you opening your heart up to someone else, what it's going to do. And just to take the time to open it up. Yeah. One of my favorite of your paintings, I don't know if it's a painting or if it's um, just a photo that you took. I think it's both. That's what I love about all your art. There's like <laughs> so much going on. I think it's a photo of you holding a painting that says passion. Oh, yeah. And then you have a parasol. And it's just so beautiful. Like you take the best photos. But I just I, I love that element. I love how you you focus on bringing those higher vibrational frequencies into your everyday life and just sharing it with people. Thanks. I, I get a lot from sharing um, because as like a creator, I'm actually really reclusive in like, I produce a lot. I create a lot. I'm an entrepreneur and I'm an artist, which doesn't leave a lot of social hour. I don't go out and see a lot of friends often. Um, so ironically, I, I share so much of myself like via my newsletters and, and I'm really real with them and what I'm writing and, and even, you know, on Facebook or Instagram or while I'm performing, um, so I think it kind of balances out my reclusive nature because I'm like, ooh, ooh, I'm making this thing and I'm making it, I'm making it, I'm all by myself, I'm making it. And then it's like, okay, what's next? Well, now I got to share it. <laughs> awesome. And um, that's why I'm excited about your your course because, you know, I moved away from San Diego a while and mm-hmm. I cannot find a belly dance instructor that's going to be able to bring that, like that energetic wisdom, it, you know, with the technique and also just be like a patient 
you know, teacher. Not everyone can do that. So I feel like what's, well, actually tell us what's the name of your, your belly dance course. So, well, the name of the, the new website is Art of You Belly Dance. So it obviously brings in, in the art, um, but it focuses on you, who is the student. And then there's two courses. One is the building blocks of belly dance. And then the second one, a little bit more intermediate, is called Breakthrough Belly Dance. If you could rename that the Omni Syntax <laughs> of belly dance and just like mic drop and just walk away. Oh like, man, seriously. Where were you? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm serious. It is so encompassing. And I don't know what I was expecting because I knew it would be good. But I think I thought more like it was going to be like a class that you could just do kind of like here and there and it'd be repetitive. But it's kind of like a really encompassing like college semester or two (laughs) is like at least an entire like year worth of like, you know, in depth, like where you could really, really explore it. You're not just kind of showing them, you're actually teaching them. Yeah, I think while I was creating the course, I just realized like, what a plethora of information I had because just writing down the content, I was like, oh, whoa, whoa, I'm like giving so much. And then the other part was like, but no, there's so much more. And I like, I authentically want people to learn as quickly as possible so that we can then layer and move them into, like, I love teaching more advanced courses as well. But of course I love breaking things down so that everyone's coming from a strong foundation. But all that said, I ended up sharing like over a dozen of over a dozen classes per course including like a warm-up and then one that a class that just focuses on bringing it all together and then just a workout so after people have learned it all and if all they want to do is do a 20-minute workout they can and I still like feel like I'm daydreaming about you know what's to come next so (laughs) that's just like belly dancing to is is like a to me it's a practice it's not a it's not a like it's not like hip hop or like five, six, seven, eight. Like we do have that and we do have choreography, but it's like as a teacher, I'm very excited about teaching online because I feel like there really is no end. And the m- sooner people start, the sooner people can be like, okay, can you repeat this? Or can you really show me this? Or I'd like to go over and it can give us something. It's like a tactile thing now that I'm like, okay, I'll do a webinar next week. We'll do it live. I'm going to address these questions. And, um, you know, just lo- this is st- while, while we're actually recording this podcast, we're still in beta, the beta launch phase. So, oh you God, know, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm about to, I'm about it's to so launch good. it before I move for real, but, um, you know, it's just the start. <laughs> Yeah, no, I I love it. It doesn't feel like you held back at all. I mean, oh good, <laughs> yeah. And I've taken classes with you. I it was at least a couple of years. I mean, I've had such highlights of classes. Where remember when you did belly dance in the chakras, <laughs> and you started, you know, getting way more into qigong mm-hmm. when you studied uh, with I think it, in Texas with your dad. You're really starting to get into the qigong, um, and it's just so awesome. Like it's just so like transcending. Um, so I did the warm up today and I wanted to kind of come back where I was saying like my back hurts and mm-hmm. I felt like crap and stuff and just, you know, just like pains and stuff. So your warm up, I think is about 23, 25 minutes. It's about 20. Yeah. There's a longer warm up where I verbally go through everything. Oh, that's the one I did. And then I have a second warm up that we just do it. So it's once you, the idea is that I want people to be able to do the warm up repeatedly so I have one where I explain it, which is probably what you did. And mm-hmm. then the second one ends up being like, I think, 18 minutes or something where we go through all the moves, but without me breaking it down as much. Yeah. No, I love the attention to detail. I think you had just really good mindfulness. You can tell that you've taught hundreds and hundreds and hundred, hundreds of students, mm. thousands and thousands of classes. Yeah. You know, but um, just your ability to kind of examine what people are kind of going to be thinking, the mm-hmm. different, you know, dis, uh, spectrum of people's bodies and their like, you know, body wisdom kind of level. But 12 minutes into the warm up, you know, where you're just talking. I was like, oh, my God, this is better than like some hour long yoga <laughs> classes that I've taken. I'm serious. Like, yeah, I agree. <laughs> I agree <laughs> with belly dancing. Uh, we just energy work because not every belly dance teacher is going to be able to um, connect 
the lines, mm. you know, the energy lines, the meridians, and mm-hmm. open up and kind of know how to like add the imagery, the metaphors. You use tons of metaphors where you can mm-hmm. just kind of just you know uh, really kind of pry open different energy s- mm-hmm. systems and kind of get that momentum. So I was all about it, and I felt good. Like after the warm up, I'm like, wow, that's like all I needed. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. And of course, yeah, I did more. I yeah. mean, yeah, especially summer's coming up. Um, one of my other favorite you know, uh, aspects of belly dance, not just for, you know, great sex <laughs> and uh, just feeling good is uh, just like the toning ability. So for me, it's so nice to be able to kind of get in your stretch, get in your energy work, you know, get in your cardio and then just really tone. And it's always been more effective. I mean, for me, and I'm kind of short, so I have a short waist and I'm the type of person where I could weigh the same, but be dehydrated and look like I gained like five to 10 pounds. And like I'm not, I just been drinking and I'm thirsty. But with belly dance, I'm I'm saying like two days before I want to wear a bikini or something like that, mm-hmm. I'll belly dance for like an hour, even a half an hour, and it looks like I lost like two inches. <laughs> That's how p- powerful belly dance is for toning. Mm-hmm. I love it. Yes, I love it so much. that is right. Nice, nice side effect to enjoying enjoying your time and f- and feeling good in your body is actually getting more in shape too (laughs) i know it's like the ultimate you know um another thing just a a comment because i mean i like i said i've been a long time fan of you as a you know not just the instructor but i love watching you as a belly dancer too i love seeing the shows when i lived in san diego or don yavad and um but so Lately, I've, I've seen a, a chiropractor, and I've been doing, um, like, some insoles and stuff because I got sports injuries and whatnot. Mm-hmm. But I found one chiropractor is able to kind of connect the feet, like how important it is for your feet to stabilize your knees and your mm-hmm. hips and the back from there. And so he gave me a couple exercises that I could do with a tennis ball. But one of the things you start doing, your spiral leg thing and your warm-up is so much better. <laughs> and it's doing the exact same thing I've been doing with like my three hundred dollar insoles. Oh my gosh! <laughs> yeah, it's awesome. Tell us more about just the things to expect and how the average person. I mean, obviously, if you're trying to belly dance or if you just want to, you know, kind of diversify your dance moves, feel good about your body. Tell us, you know, more of what people can expect with you know taking this course. So, you can. F- one good thing is you can actually see a lot about the course on the art of you belly dance.com website um, without having to purchase anything or make any kind of decisions. You can see the entire curriculum of the class and how long each video will be and what each video will be. You won't get to watch the full video, but you can at least get a gauge of what to expect. So I'll break it down um, just verbally right now is um, – so like Francesca was saying, there's in the first course, there is a warm up. I explain thoroughly and then we just can kind of roll with it on the second video. And then each class is broken into like 10 to, t- to I would say averaging about like 15 minutes per class. And it's focusing on like one specific move or maybe like a, a variation of a move, like a timing combo or it might be like, we just did figure eights with the hips. Now we're going to add hands in this video. So it's kind of like these bite-sized nuggets because we are all crazy busy because we live mm-hmm. <laughs> in 2018. And I know that I'm crazy busy as well. But I think we also know that when we really enjoy things, we make more time for them. So in this case, you do have the option to just do like a 15-minute class, do a warm-up and a 15-minute class per day and just like – use the warm up to feel good as as you were just saying and then learn a little something new and progress along that way. Of course, if you were like geeking out and wanted to go on a binge belly dance thing, mm-hmm. all you have to do is press next 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 and you can keep learning for as long as you want. You can go back to them as many times as you want and I'm actually going to make some of the classes downloadable for short periods of time because I know a couple people um do travel and they might want to download it. And so I decided to like open up small windows where people can download it, but I won't keep those windows open just because, you know, uh, I don't want the whole world just downloading and watching it without getting it. (laughs) Bootleg. (laughs) I don't know. You know, I mean, the whole world would be a lot happier, but I might have to find new work. (laughs) Hot black market. Um, But 
but so and then I guess the most exciting part is uh, after going through the course, I put all of the moves together into a combination. And then the combination in the next video becomes basically like a fun workout video. And that's like the one of the few videos that I have music going and I just barely talk and we can just dance it out. So once you feel like really confident with the moves, you can literally just use that as your workout, your exercise. That's like way more fun than any, than most, the word exercise. I, I have a hard time even promoting <laughs> the class because I, I feel like so it's so easy to say it's a great workout or it's exercise and of course we you know it's good to work out and exercise but really you're really fully Im like embodying who you are and if you're taking all the technique that I taught then you're aligned as you're doing it and then you're just like having fun and getting cardio and so that's how we end each course and of course the material depends on the building uh, the building blocks really create a strong foundation and even if you have belly dance experience I feel like it's important for everyone to start there, especially if you haven't met me as your teacher, because I say things like make sure your triangles facing forward. I have all these metaphors that are going to really help you continue to expand with me. And then the breakthrough course, which is the next course, is definitely more intermediate, still not advanced, but we go into belly rolls and all sorts of like really fun things. Um, and, and get a little bit more creative with the moves. So there's a bundle where you can get both at a discount. And and uh, yeah, I think that kind of sums up pretty well what you're getting. Check it out on the website if you want to see more. For sure. I actually um, got to just see it on my, my laptop at my mm -hmm. mom's house. So I thought it was very convenient. I got the bundle. Nice. Loved it. Oh, my gosh. Can't wait to keep doing it because I've been needing it in, in my life. You know, like I... Like you were saying, I mean, you're just busy. And I actually tried doing Body Boss. Uh, I don't know if you've seen those Facebook mm -mm. ads. And it's um, it was convenient. It was helpful because you're doing kind of like these um, circuit kind of training. I got to do it at the house. I lost a little weight and stuff. Lost no inches, unfortunately. <laughs> but, like, it was a little too hardcore. It was kind of beating my body up because, mm. you know, I have sports injuries. But your, you know, your course kind of felt like it was kind of like your – going to church almost but it's like the kind you know church without the dogma like you're at the <laughs> I was ocean like, oh, that's the first time someone yeah told me that. you're well, basically actually, it's not. yeah guided meditation kind of like you're on a spiritual journey and you're in nature or you're at the beach or just someplace that just you can feel really grounded and really uplifted oh at the same i'm time. i'm really happy to hear that i've i've been an in-person teacher for over a decade so switching online i i really didn't want to lose that connection and i um I actually, there's ability to leave comments uh, under each video. So that's one way that I can really kind of continue to connect with my students. And if people continue to ask the same questions, um, I plan to do like webinars every now and then to address those and um, really help people learn. And so essentially, like the more people engage with me and actually realize like, oh, she reads this like this is a human being who <laughs> I care and I'm there and I'm sharing and I think that's also part of like this kind of paradigm shift is like all the businesses that I'm personally working with including teachable platform where I'm teaching from and my art platform like I'm talking to real people they're actually responding and we're I think we're just so used to some fucking bullshit like customer service that it's so Robot. scary to make any kind of decision on purchasing anymore and I think that the win-win types of relationships are actually starting to win because we're just over bombarded with so many options and over it that um it's nice that I can like be like okay yes I read these I am I'm the one who can give you the belly dance feedback so I'm the one reading the comments and and um and yeah it kind of just brings me back to like just even just sisterhood and like how we are in a place right now that we can just w share something immediately and ha so many people see it immediately and so many people continue that ripple it's pretty baffling oh yeah shifting we are shifting and i love that you're worldwide now i think that that's <laughs> better for everybody <laughs> yeah i think that it really is that time i'm not from san diego i'm from el paso, el paso texas so people are like, how can you leave? You're so m much a part of San Diego. I was like, 
you don't know where I'm from. Like, and I've had to remind myself that like, I'm, I grew up very different from this reality and I'm about to leave to a place very different than this reality. And is it kind of scary? Because I mean, Ocean Beach is so nice. And I mean, you've had like this kind of just this extraordinary life. You're, you have the best level of celebrity where you're like, <laughs> you know, for you, you have your own celebrity, but the paparazzi doesn't like chase you. Yeah, that would s- really suck. It's like the perfect level. But um, like, what are you, what are you thinking? Like, what are some just, you know, ma- just taking chances. You th- Everything about your life that's just so amazing now. I mean, you're uh, taking a chance on a better yeah. chapter or just a better chapter for you right now. Yeah, exactly. Um, I think the main thing that I've learned um, based on what you just said about like me living this like awesome life and it's got to be is is um, giving myself permission to change and to feel. So I'm basically living the life I really wanted to live when I moved out here. I didn't even really know it was really possible to make a full-time living off of my entertainment, my teaching, modeling, and painting. And I've been doing it. I haven't had to get a job. I've never had a job that I've had a boss, ever. <laughs> In high so school, I, wor- I worked at my dad's <laughs> gallery. So, um, but... There, the grass is always greener, you know, and when you're in it, you know, even though you say it was like, I'm like the perfect level of celebrity, which I totally can agree in some ways in other ways, um, I, all of my arts expanded to the point where they can't continue to expand in this way. Like I, I can't really paint commissions when entertainment companies are trying to book me every weekend and I can't really paint if I'm teaching six classes a week and then my students who see me want private classes on top of that. And so basically it really w- it really is time for me to go worldwide um, because I can only physically do so much. And, and so it was really just giving me myself permission to realize that just because I attained what I wanted to attain doesn't mean I should stop dreaming about different things or, or releasing some of those things that I hold so dearly and realizing that uh, all the efforts are, sh- are still – paid off into a be- into beautiful relationships and like you said when I was sharing with on my online courses it's like you can tell I've taught hundreds of people had I just been like oh my god I want to teach online courses and I want to like when I was younger I wouldn't have been able to share in the way that I am now so I think you know maybe it is because I've gotten older and I've still got a lot of life to go but there is a sort of understanding of like the patterns and how you don't have to rush everything and and how to honor what you need and not be afraid of like, well, if I, if I start saying like, for me, it was like, if I start saying no to all my gigs and get out of the entertainment com- industry, like then I'm just going to fall off the map and I don't want to retire. And that's all fear speaking. And it was like, you do have to, maybe that is true. And maybe that will happen. But if I'm honestly feeling like I need to kind of pull away and reserve and reserve my energies and fill my cup up, then if that happens, so be it. Like you have to listen or I I have to listen to like my inner guidance because if not, what was happening was I was getting extreme head pain every day. My ears were literally ringing and I was in very bad shape about a year ago from all of the chaos. And I went to Peru and I did an ayahuasca ceremony and I was basically told that I needed to significantly change my lifestyle and listen to my inner voice if I wanted to experience relief and that was a year ago and I started to listen and my earaches went away and my head pain started going away and that's how I know I'm doing the right thing do I have fear hell yes (laughs) I suffer from anxiety more than the average person but when I when I really feel into what I'm doing, it actually is relieving some of the anxiety that I'm having. And a lot of the anxiety was me feeling like I had to uphold the, the great character of Adelaide Marcus. <laughs> you know, I'm make many aliases, but we all we all are playing the character of ourselves and it's a lot to uphold. And so so it's nice to give ourselves permission <laughs> back to that to continue to expand and that Adelaide Marcus or Francesca or whoever's listening doesn't have to, you know, be the same person you were in high school, <laughs> you know, yeah. who wants to. 
nice to it's nice to be able to shift. So I'm I'm definitely scared, um, but I'm also I just know it's right. Awesome. Yeah. Enjoy the journey. It's about the journey. Yeah. It's not the, exactly. the label. Adelaide, do you have any other um, final thoughts or anything else that you want to share with us? I'll take anything else that you want to give right now. Oh, Domination gosh. University. I don't know. That felt like a good, <laughs> that, that kind of summed it up, you yeah. know, and, and kind of tied a nice bow on it. We started um, when you asked me the first question about just, you know, introducing myself as an artist. I, I really just, that's the hardest question for me because it's like you might, I might as well just say everything about me, um, not necessarily about what I do. And so right now talking about me moving was really relieving because you coming over here while my house is in boxes, <laughs> I was just like, oh my gosh, wait, I feel like, you know, when people have a baby and they have like baby brain, I feel like I have like moving brain. <laughs> and then I sat down and I was like, you know what? I am who I am. There's no way to get any answers wrong <laughs> like you're just asking <laughs> about what I offer and my perspective so I really appreciate you kind of bringing it full circle for me and for all everybody who's listening oh for sure thank you so much for your time and again uh, it's art by you that, uh, oh the, the teaching is Bellamy. art of you art of you okay. belly dance art of you belly dance and then art by Adelaide and then is art it? by Adelaide you can see all of my paintings Awesome. Adelaide Marcus, thank you so much and best of luck. Yes, thank journey. you. I'm sure we'll see each other somewhere. somewhere. I mean, we've been in Costa Rica together. I know. Even. I know. So you gave me a I, salsa lesson yeah. in Costa Rica. Yeah, so awesome. I'll, I'll be seeing you in <laughs> LA or my cabin or elsewhere. Oh, for sure. We've got to get you on the Dom U video series. Maybe you can yeah. give a little teaser. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks, Adelaide. Thank you. <laughs>